Welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Elizabeth Tracy. So privileged to be here in the Johns Hopkins Children's Center with Dr. Patrick Brown, a childhood leukemia expert, and Amanda Leininger, our social media guru. Today we're talking about a really revolutionary new treatment for leukemia, and I'm going to let you serve that up. All right, great. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks, Amanda. So the new treatment that we're talking about today is um, it's got a couple of different names. The easiest one to pronounce is Kimraya. Um, it's also got a, a generic name, which is Tisagen Leclusal. So Kimraya, we'll that go with. That's really good. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I've been practicing. Um, and so this is a new treatment for children and young adults that have a form of leukemia called uh, B-cell ALL, which stands for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And it's specifically for patients who either are not responding at all to standard chemotherapy or have relapsed for a second or greater time after they've received chemotherapy. And so this is a, a new treatment that we have in our toolbox to treat patients in that situation. Help me understand why it's so revolutionary. Uh, there's a few different reasons. So um, the reason the name is so long is the name has to capture all the different kind of novel elements of it. And one of them is that it's the first genetic therapy. Um, and I'll explain what that means in a moment that's been FDA approved. The second is that it's a cellular therapy. So it's not a drug per se. It's not a chemical. It's actually using human cells as a treatment for a disease. And those are both very novel things. Um, the third thing that makes it so novel is how effective it is against um, a disease and a situation that before now we've had no effective therapies for. So our standard treatments for leukemia, which include different forms of chemotherapy and sometimes radiation therapy, are completely ineffective against the particular situation that this therapy was developed for and its success in treating that and the responses that we've seen in that situation are novel and unprecedented, and that's why there's so much excitement about it. My understanding is that someone's own cells are taken, and then they're modified and then given back. This has been a goal that's been advocated for, pushed for, for years in medicine. Absolutely. So I remember in medical school, which unfortunately was a very long time ago for me, learning about the promise of immunotherapy and you know the idea that we could harness the power of our immune system, and it really is so powerful, to help treat diseases, and, it's, and specifically in cancer. I think that's where the promise of immunotherapy um, was, was really generated the most excitement. And to see it finally come to fruition after all that time is uh, it's very gratifying, uh, mostly because it gives our patients uh, hope where in the past we haven't had you know, something to, to give them that hope, uh, treatments that worked in that situation. There are some side effects, however, with Absolutely. this treatment. Absolutely. So uh, to understand the side effects, I think it's important to understand how it works. So why don't we spend a few minutes talking about that. Um, as I mentioned, our immune system is a really incredible uh, orchestrated system uh, that's designed to protect us from uh, many different things in our environment that can be harmful. And the way I like to think about the immune system is that it's a, it's a group of security guards each of which has been trained to recognize a threat. So literally, it, so the, the main component of our immune system that's relevant for this discussion is T lymphocytes. It's a type of white blood cell, um, and it's called a T cell or a T lymphocyte. And the way, the way T lymphocytes are set up is that there's literally about 100,000 different groups of T cells in our body, and we all have them. And each little group is trained to recognize something as foreign, usually infections, and any cell in the body or any part of the body that has that threat is eliminated or killed by those cells. So they're very focused security guards, each of which has their own mission, if you will. And so, for example, if I was infected with the flu virus, and it is the flu season, so go get your flu shots. You have to get that in there. Um, so if I was infected with the flu virus, there's a group of T cells in my body that is trained and ready for the flu virus and attacks the flu when it enters my body and keeps me alive. Um, that's how the immune system works. And the immune system, again, is set up to handle just about any threat that can, can come our way when it's healthy. The way this system works, this treatment, is that we harvest from the patient their own normal T cells. 
and that includes not only the T cells that are trained to fight the flu, but also a group of T cells that's trained to fight everything else. So it's a big mix of T cells. And we then, and by we, I mean scientists and laboratory technicians, um, uh, not me personally, but the techniques have been developed to put a new gene into those T cells that make, that basically retrain them to all recognize the same thing, the same threat. And that threat is a protein that's on the leukemia. And so once those cells have been retrained genetically in order to recognize a protein that's on the surface of the leukemia cells, in this case, the leukemia is a B cell leukemia, which is another uh, form of white blood cell, then they're given back to the patient in a simple IV infusion, like a transfusion or any, any IV infusion, and those cells are retrained. They see the leukemia as a threat, and just like the patient had a flu, they go and kill those cells. Now we get to the side effects. The, the side effects are basically the same you would get with a very severe flu infection because when T cells kill, when those trained T cells go and kill that leukemia, they release chemicals called cytokines that make us feel the symptoms, fever. They can lower blood pressure. It can make you very, very sick in the short term, just like the flu can. But once the leukemia has been eliminated, just like once an infection has been eliminated, the body can recover and heal and get back to its normal state. So the most severe side effects, the most dangerous ones, are in that initial period when those retrained T cells start, start to expand and circulate in the patient, find their target, and start to kill them. And it releases those chemicals that are necessary for them to do their job, but they do cause side effects and symptoms. So fever, low blood pressure, difficulty handling fluids, and it can be very, very severe to the point where some patients it can be even life-threatening. And so that's why it's very important for patients to be treated in centers that have expertise and can handle these side effects. Like this one. Like this one. And we actually have a question from one of our viewers. Will this be the new standard of care for patients with ALL mm. or only for those who have relapsed? It's such a great question, Amanda. So as of right now, this is a treatment option for the situation that I laid out children and young adults that have this form of leukemia, B-cell lymphoblastic leukemia, that has not responded or has come back at least twice after standard treatment. Now, we as a group, as a field, are conducting clinical trials and other studies to figure out whether this treatment could or should be introduced earlier in the disease process so that it could become standard therapy even in, in uh, situations that are uh, earlier in the disease process, if you will, maybe to prevent relapse, for example. Um, and so we don't, it's not standard yet. Um, it is a treatment option and a standard therapy for the specific indications that I've talked about. But we are hopeful that we could potentially figure out how to use this therapy earlier on to prevent relapses and perhaps treat patients more effectively than we currently can with fewer side effects overall. Um, the other thing I should mention about side effects is the, the protein that these retrained security guards can recognize and kill on the leukemia is a protein called CD19. And it is expressed not only in the leukemia cells, but also on our normal B cells. So this form of leukemia arises from our normal B cells and shares with it that CD19. So another side effect is that the treatment also eliminates our normal B cells, another component of our immune system. Fortunately, we can survive without normal B cells by replacing um, what normal B cells off, uh, are designed to produce, which are immunoglobulins or antibodies. So patients that receive this therapy, their B cells are also eliminated, and they have to come in once a month, or there's forms that you can get um, less frequently or, or uh, more frequently than that, that uh, can replace the antibodies that the B cells normally produce. So those are the major side effects. And you anticipate that this antibody replacement is something that would have to take place throughout the lifetime? It's a great question. So one of the unanswered questions is how long do the CAR T cells persist and remain active in the patients after they've been infused? And the answer is it depends. For some patients, the uh, lifespan, if you will, of the CAR T cells has been uh, shorter. And for other patients, there are patients that 
where it so far has been indefinite, where they've gone for years and their CAR T cells are still there, still doing their job. For those patients, certainly they would continue to have to um, get the antibodies to replace that. What we know about the persistence of the CAR T cells is that there's a link between that persistence and whether the leukemia stays away or not. And so in, in, in one way, that persistence is something that we want to see because that would be correlated with long-term leukemia control and perhaps even cure, although we're not quite certain of that yet. We need time to, to figure that part out. Um, the, the downside of persistence, of course, is that the B cells are, are continuing to be eliminated and need to be replaced. So um, one of the ways that this therapy could potentially be improved is if we knew when the CAR T cells were no longer needed. In other words, the security guards have done their job. They've killed all the leukemia. And the only thing they're doing now is, is killing innocent bystanders. Then could we potentially turn that off? And so there are some, some, there's some research being done to potentially engineer in uh, a, a suicide mechanism, if you will, to tell the security guards they can retire. And so those are the sorts of improvements in the next generation of this therapy that could potentially make it um, you know, uh, even more effective than it, than it is right now. You used a term that I don't think we've defined yet, and that was CAR T cells. Ah, yes. So uh, CAR T cells. So CAR is an acronym, and it stands for Chimeric Antigen Receptor. So the way T cells recognize their target is with an antigen receptor. And so when we take a T cell that is normally looking for the flu and we tell it to look for CD19 instead, that's a chimera. We've forced it to do something it's not normally doing through engineering. And so that's a chimeric antigen receptor T cell, CAR T cell. And so that's the shorthand for these types of therapy. Kimraya is one example and the first um, example of an FDA approved CAR T cell product, um, but that's, that's what CAR T cell means. Thanks for uh, pointing that out. How optimistic are you that this strategy will also be useful in other childhood leukemias and then other types of tumors in children and in adults for that matter? It's a great question. So one, it, it, the, the history of treatments for any disease and in particular for cancer is such that the, the the easiest subset of the disease to treat with that therapy is the first that it's effective in. And the reason why B cell leukemia was the first that this worked in is because we can get away with not having normal B cells. And the challenge of applying this therapy to other forms of leukemia and other forms of cancer is that it's, uh, for most other types of leukemia and cancer, if you eliminate the normal counterpart of what that cancer arose from, then that would lead to unacceptable side effects. So in this case, we can replace B cell function with immunoglobulin. Um, for example, there are leukemias that arise from T cells. You can imagine if you eliminate all normal T cells in addition to the leukemic T cells, you've got a problem because you can no longer fight off infections, for example. Um, same thing with what are called myeloid leukemias or AML. If you, if you eliminate the normal counterparts of those cells, you can't make key components of blood and that's a difficult situation to arise from. And it's true of solid tumors as well. Now, am I optimistic that those challenges are gonna be overcome? Absolutely. Just like the challenge to, to uh, the challenges overcome to make this therapy available for B-cell leukemia, there, there is the expertise, intelligence, drive, motivation to overcome those challenges and make this therapy and other immunotherapies applicable for a broader range of patients. It's just a matter of time. You sound like you're really excited about it. This is the most uh, exciting time um, that I have certainly experienced in, in, in my field. Um, we have had an explosion of new, effective, and targeted therapies for cancer, and specifically for childhood leukemia. And I can't imagine a, a more exciting time for our field. And, you know, the, the most gratifying part of that is that uh, I see, you know, you can start to see a day when many of these cancers become, if not completely curable, if not completely eliminated, I should say, curable in every case. 
and, uh, and with limited, if any, long-term side effects. And, and that is an exciting thing to see. And it's just, um, it's just so cool that it's harnessing something naturally within our bodies that's just this powerful natural force and harnessing it and directing it to do, to do good and eliminate disease. On that wonderful optimistic note, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no. That'll um, do it. Get your flu shots, I guess. <laughs> okay, thank you so very much for joining us today on Facebook Live. I'm Elizabeth Tracy. We're here at the Johns Hopkins Children's Center. Patrick Brown, thank you so very much for joining us. And Amanda, thanks for your expertise with the social media.